Hey folks, this is Kalani. Patch 9.2 will introduce a new type of gear that can scale all the way up to item level 252 and the best part is you can get there all by yourself. You don't need to step into raids or dungeons or PvP and there are even some extra options to push past that item level 252 mark. So I'm going to show you how to gear up to item level 252 and beyond all by yourself with no group content needed. Before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss a another video. The major gearing up path for solo players in patch 9.2 is tied to the cipher of the first one system. This system unlocks very early and it's chock full of little updates for the Xerath Mortis zone. You can unlock new quest hubs, new daily quests, new world quests, new storylines and new powers to use in the zone. But we're here for gear. So how exactly will the cipher help us get some shiny item level loot? Well, if you have a look at the top left of the cipher window you can see that we have a cipher equipment level or rank this starts at one and it maxes out when we reach level six cipher equipment that level or rank dictates what item level gear rewards you can get from the xerath mortis zone you can see what kind of gear this system will affect because the item will have cipher equipment stamped on it in big blue letters at the top of the tooltip. So all of this in my bags right here, this is all cipher equipment and its item level is dependent on what your cipher equipment level is. You can get Cypher equipment from a variety of sources in Xerath Mortis. Daily quests have a chance to reward it, so be sure to check all of the daily quests across the zone. You never know when you're going to get that big upgrade that you're missing. The daily quests also reward you with other useful goodies like Cosmic Flux and Cypher of the First One currencies, so they're going to be valuable no matter what. World quests also have a chance to reward you with Cypher equipment. These are pretty obvious and very easy to check, so whenever you log in, give them a quick scan to see if there's anything useful you can go after. And then the bi-weekly quest in Xerath Mortis, Patterns Within Patterns, will reward you with a chest. When you open that chest, you have a high chance to get a piece of cipher equipment, so quite a few sources to get your hands on this new gearing option. Now as I said before, the item level of all of this gear is going to depend on your cipher equipment level. To increase your level, all you have to do is spend the cipher currency by unlocking new traits or talents in the system. As you progress through the cipher of the first ones and unlock more and more, your equipment level will increase, which will increase the item level of your cipher equipment. When you start at level 1, Cypher Equipment will be item level 233. When you reach level 2, Cypher Equipment will increase up to item level 239. At level 3, that increases again to item level 242. At level 4, it goes up to item level 246. At level 5, it's going to increase up to item level 249. And then the final level, level 6, will put your Cypher Equipment at item level 252. So when you've unlocked almost everything in this window and you've spent all of the necessary cipher currency at that max equipment level of 6, all of these gear rewards from daily quests, world quests and the weekly chest, that's all going to drop at item level 252. That puts it on par with normal raiding loot and that's the exact same item level as the first bosses in the normal raid. So if you don't want to do any group content but you still want to progress towards something and more importantly increase your item level, the cipher equipment feature lets you get up to normal raiding gear just by playing through the open world and focusing on the Xerath Mortis zone. Some cipher equipment also has very special properties. They can either have a socket or a special effect. The special effects can vary from increased movement speed to giving you a free teleport ability. Getting these special effects does seem to be quite rare though, so when you get one, be sure to hold on to that piece of gear. All of these special effects also increase in effectiveness at higher item levels, so these effects could end up being very useful when your cipher equipment is max item level. The sockets are very special though, you can't just place any old gem in there, you'll need to do a bit of research in the Cypher the First One system to unlock the ability to turn an enhancement console into a gem. These will make more sense when you get into the patch for real and unlock them, but basically there are consoles around the zone you can interact with, they offer you a choice of temporary powers, very much like Anima Orbs in Torghast, but when you unlock the ability to turn these effects into gems, you can then slot them into Cypher equipment, giving you those effects permanently. This has the potential to turn Cypher equipment into an absolute monster powerhouse of a gearing up system. The only catch is that these powers only work in Shadowlands open world zones, so you won't get the benefit from these powers in dungeons, raids or PvP, but that should be fine if you aren't that interested in group content anyway. 
Now obviously this all revolves around the ciphers of the first ones and obtaining this currency as quickly as possible. You can get ciphers from almost anywhere in the Xerath Mortis zone, from opening treasures, completing daily quests, completing the bi-weekly quest, killing rares. If it's in Xerath Mortis, chances are you're going to get ciphers from doing it. So all you really have to do is play in the new zone and this new system will level up slowly but surely. When all is said and done, this is going to take a good chunk of time. This isn't a quick gearing up method, but it is reliable. It is is tangible, it's not really random, and you can do it all by yourself. It also doesn't have the same crazy restrictions or required rep farming or massive currency grind with no other rewards tied to it that the Corthia upgrade system had. This is almost in the background, a passive gearing up method as you work your way through the cipher system. It's honestly going to be great for all the solo players out there, and it gives you meaningful progress to work through. Now even though the Cypher equipment is going to give you access to higher item level gear without having to do any group content, that's not the only new gearing up option you have as a solo player. The new world boss in Xerath Mortis will drop item level 259 gear and there seem to be quite a few slots covered depending on your armor class, so if you get lucky you could have some easy item level 259 gear to go along with everything else. There are also some new crafters marks that let you craft item level 233 gear. That's pretty high if you didn't do any gearing up in patch 9.1 and can help fill in some of the gaps while you work on the cipher of the first ones or some of the other gearing up options in this video. Then you can also craft and equip one piece of 262 crafted gear with the crafters mark of the first ones. Any piece of gear crafted with this mark becomes unique equipped, so you can only wear one of them at a time, but having access to 262 item level gear is going to be huge, even if it's only in one slot. This is going to be perfect for getting a nice ring or an offset piece with the exact stats that you want. As an extra bonus, you can also use brand new optional reagents to add an additional power to your crafted gear. This might make 233 crafted gear a bit better than it would be otherwise, but this could really amp up the power of the 262 crafted gear. Item level 262 crafted gear is going to be huge for any solo player because it's almost impossible to replace without getting into group content, so having an extra bonus on top of that is going to be really nice. If you're looking for something to upgrade your gear while you work on the cipher of the first ones, there's also the Sandworn Relic vendor. Sandworn Relics can be found in the Endless Sands area of the new zone. It's full of elites and much harder to navigate, but if you can get your hands on some of these Sandworn Relics, you can trade them in for 246 gear. Almost every slot is covered by this vendor, so until you can unlock rank 4 in the cipher equipment system, the Sandworn Relic gear might help you gear up as well. This gear also has a unique transmog, and it's all themed after the brokers themselves, so if you've always wanted to run around looking like a broker, these sets are going to be perfect for you. Sand 1 relics mostly come from killing rares in the endless sands, completing daily quests in the nearby hub, and opening treasures in the same area. And then on top of everything else, there's also a new BOA token to help you get caught up to speed for starting this whole gearing up adventure, or maybe to help your fresh alts get caught up to speed as well. You can buy bind on account items for every single slot, and even the trinkets and rings are separated this time, so the dev team is definitely listening. These tokens will give you item level 226 gear when used, and they each cost 500 anima. You can purchase them from the Enlightened Provisioner in Xerath Mortis, and there are no rent requirements that I know of, so it should be open to everyone right away. With all of these sources of gear combined, you have a lot of gearing up options as a solo player, and you can get pretty far. If you combine the BOA tokens with crafter gear, you can gear up to a baseline level almost instantly. Then you have the Sandworn Relic gear to work on to up that item level quickly, and the Cypher the First One's equipment upgrade system for the long-term progress of your character. Add in that one 262 crafter gear, maybe some items from the world boss, and your new legendary rank 7 items, and your double legendary, and you can achieve a pretty hefty item level, all without ever stepping foot into group content. So there we have it. What do you think of all these solo gearing options? Do you think they should upgrade even higher, or is 252 a good cutoff to keep raiding, PvP, and Mythic Plus activities more rewarding? How would you like to be able to earn gear in future patches, or maybe a future expansion? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, and to everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I'll see you next time.